We don't need to do announcements. Riley already announced for the town hall. Okay, uh, yeah, right now. Alright, we got a quick announcement and then we're going to get started. We got a quick announcement and then we're going to get started. Alright, if anyone is interested in going on our trip, I have the Okay, we've changed how we mow grass. Um, if you could sign up, there's a chart going around. All you have to do is sign up for one week. Mow the grass. You can sign up for as many weeks as you, as you want. If you can't get to the mower, don't have a key, Ken can help you. If you don't know how to drive the lawnmower, Ken can show you. Ken can do anything. <laughs> what type of mower is that? Isn't that that new fun one? The two handles of the zero turn. It's a zero turn. Yeah. Ooh, for all you guys who want to try out zero turn, here's your opportunity. Just say it. All right, anyone else? I'll send her anybody. All right, here we go. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer, shall we? We got two boxes. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in holy baptism, you began your good work in Olivia, Elizabeth, and Hannah, forgiving them all their sins and giving them the gift of the Holy Spirit and faith in your Son. You have also blessed their instruction in the Word of God, and you have also blessed our instruction in the Word of God. So be with all of us now in our conversation together, that we may faithfully confess our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So again, uh, as we've done in the past, I'm going to ask a couple questions based on the six chief parts of the, uh, of the uh, small catechism. I'm going to have our confirmants answer a fair amount of them, but whenever they kind of look tired and overwhelmed, that is our cue to join in. So raise your hand and give a good answer. You're ready, right? Uh, and give a good answer uh, to uh, what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. So, Ten Commandments. So, the Ten Commandments are divided into two parts or tables. Which commandments belong to, to the first table? Which one of you would like to start? All right, go ahead. The first three. And what is the summary of the first three commandments? Love God, right? Very good. Now, uh, for the rest of the commandments, four through ten, what's the summary of the commandments four through ten? Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, anyone in the audience, who is your neighbor? All right, go ahead. Everyone, right? Everyone is your neighbor, especially uh, anyone who got places in your life. All right, first commandment is, say it together, you shall have no other gods. Okay, so what does God forbid in the first commandment? Having other gods. Uh, so what should we do according to the first commandment? <clears throat> Believe in just the true God. Another way to say is we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Good. Okay, second commandment together. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Uh, you can either quote it or put it in your own words. What does God forbid in that commandment? Yeah, Yeah, using the name of the Lord in vain. Uh, any other examples of uh, things that God forbids in the commandment? Yeah, brothers? Well done. And you anticipated my next question. What are the good things that we should use God's name for? What things should we use God's name for? So don't curse, don't swear, you don't use satanic arts. What should we use it for? Yes. Prayers. Praise. And any trouble. 
And to give thanks. Good, good. All right, third commandment is remember Sabbath day by keeping it holy. All right, so how do we sin against the third commandment? How are we sinning against the third commandment? Can you give an example of what God forbids. Not go to church. Okay, taking that. Okay, doing unholy things on the Sabbath, especially when we're gathered for worship, right? We shouldn't be doing unholy things when we're in worship, right? Because God's Word is holy, right? So what are some good things that we should do in order to keep that commandment? What good things does God want us to do? According to, remember the Sabbath day, but keep it holy. Hmm? I heard our good answer. Read your Bibles, right? And enjoy reading your Bibles, right? Take delight in reading your Bibles. One more thing. Any other good things according to that commandment? Go to church every week. It's good. Good. And pay attention, right? <laughs> and discuss it, right? Enjoy it. Oh, one more to add, Josh? Gladly hear and learn. Gladly hear and learn. Good. All right. Fourth commandment together. Honor your father and your mother. Okay, what's the promise that God attaches, according to the scriptures, to the fourth commandment? Yeah. Um, you will live long upon the earth. Yeah, you will live long upon the earth. Good. Um, now, is the commandment just mother and father? No. Okay, give me another example or two of, uh, of who we are to honor. Yeah. All authorities. Good. Now, let's sum it all up. Yeah, thank you, Dad. Yeah, whoever's taking care of you, whether that's spiritually or physically, right? Or at your job, right? Yeah. Whoever's taking care of you. Um, let's see. Fifth commandment is you shall not murder, right? Okay, so name at least three things that God forbids uh, according to this commandment. Can you name at least one thing each, maybe? All right, yeah. Not actually killing people. Good. Yeah, being mean to people and hurting them with your words. Yeah. yeah, physically and spiritually harming people, right? Or sometimes we use the word abuse, right? Anything to add? Um, hating people because that's classified as Okay, yeah, hating people in our hearts, yeah. Uh, anything to add? That's good, good answers, good answers. Okay, so positive side. What should we do according to this commandment? Give me some things that God tells us that we should do. Yeah, right. Help and support our neighbor in every physical need. Help and support our neighbor in every physical need. Uh, any practical examples of that? Practical examples of helping and supporting your neighbor in every physical need. Yeah. Yeah, take care of people who are hurt or sick. Good. Maybe one more. <laughs> Good job. I tell you what, the answers, the answers are getting younger and younger out of notice, which is great. But even if you're older, you can still answer questions. Right? Uh, yes. Pray for people, especially when they need have needs. Good. All right, sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. Okay, so uh, maybe one or two things that God forbids. What does God forbid according to that commandment? Adultery, right? Okay. Uh, anything else? Is it just adultery? Cheating on your spouse. Cheating on your spouse. Okay. Is it just cheating on your spouse or adultery? Okay. Thinking about it, right? Uh, maybe uh, put it in a positive way. What What good does God want us to do uh, according to this commandment? Hmm? Be, loyal. Be loyal, right? Be loyal to our spouse. Uh, yeah, Brad. <coughs> Pure and decent life. Lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and in what we do. And we can also add in what we don't do. Uh, that's not in the catechism, but that's true, right? We save uh, sexual thoughts, words, and deeds for our spouse alone, right? Marriage partner alone. All right, seventh commandment is you shall not steal. Steal! All right, so um, I think that's uh, hard to cover. How about the Eighth Commandment? You shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor. So what does God forbid in the, in the Eighth Commandment? Put it in your own words. 
Gossiping. Good. Well, not, it's not good, but that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? Like, God forbid. Yes. Lying about somebody, especially that hurts, hurts them. Yeah. Uh, any other? Yeah. Yeah, cheating them and then, you know, lying about it, right? So, um, what are the positive things that we should do with our words, right? What, what, according to the commandment, you know, you shall not bear false testimony, what are some good things that God wants us to say? Yeah. Yeah, tell about the good things about other people. Good answer. Yeah. Encourage people, right? Good. Yeah, one more, yeah. Spread the gospel. Spread the gospel. Good. Yep. Explain everything in the kindest way. Oh, yeah. When we do have to talk about difficult things, explain everything in the kindest way. All right. Uh, let's do the shortened version of the ninth and tenth commandment. You shall not. One word. Covet, right? Um, what does coveting mean? Yeah. Wanting something that's not yours to the point, yeah. That to the point where you want to break it up or take it from somebody, right? Whether that's uh, their property or their spouse, their workers, or even their animals, right? Yeah. Um, in one word, what does God want us to be? According to the ninth and tenth commandments, right? It says, you shall not covet. So, what is like, what does God want us to be? Yeah. Content, right? To be content. Good. All right. Um, when God gives us all these commandments, does He uh, command us to obey them sometimes, most of the time, or all the time? All the time. All right. This is a pass fail. You get this wrong, you automatically fail. Can you obey all of God's commandments all the time without sin? No. no. Good, you all pass. All right. Who is the only person who obeyed all of God's commandments all the time without sin? Jesus, right. All right, and then maybe a practical question. If we can't keep God's commandments, why in the world would God give us these commandments? Yeah. Okay, we should at least try, even though we can't, right? And sometimes we say for our Christian life that the Ten Commandments is a God. Right? Any other reasons? Yeah. To reveal, our to reveal our sinful nature, right? We can actually compare and contrast our own thoughts, words, and deeds to the Ten Commandments and see where we fall short, right? And, and how we need a Savior, right? Uh, and then maybe one more. We got... Mirror, we got a guide. Curve, 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 right? That means to kind of keep sin in check, right? That our consciences, we don't just keep on going and sinning. All right. What are the three creeds in the Christian church? Apostles, Nicene, Athanasia. Good. How many gods do we have? One, right? Um, did God create you? Yes. Um, does God still take care of you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Give me at least two other names or titles for Jesus. Okay, give me one. Give me one. God. Christ. Good. Messiah. The Good Shepherd. And one more. Savior. Savior. Good. All right. Um, who is Jesus? Who is God? <laughs> answer that question. That is so true. So how else can we say, who is Jesus? Yeah. God's son. Right? Second person of the Trinity. What two natures are combined in one Christ? Yeah, human and divine. Right? Human and divine. Right? True God, true man, one person. Alright. Um, oh, what did Jesus come to earth to do? What, if, if there was a word or a phrase you could use to describe the work of Jesus, what would it be? He came to save us, right? Um, also, uh, and to save us from our sin. Uh, there's also a good 
vocabulary word that begins with R or that begins with an A. Redeem, right? And the A word. Atone, right? Make us one with God. All right. From what has Christ redeemed you? Sin, death, and the power of the devil. Did Christ rise from the dead? Yes. Why is Jesus' resurrection so important? Okay, he has power, he proves his power over death and no, death. Yep, proclaimed his victory. Good. Good. Uh, also, Jesus makes a promise, because I live, you shall live also. All right. All right. What do we call the special work of the Holy Spirit? What do we call the special work of the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? Oh, I heard it. I heard it. It was whispered. Someone whispered an S word. Sanctification, Sanctification right? To sanctify. Uh, another word to describe sanctify or sanctification. Put it in your own words, Josh. To make holy. To make holy. There you go. Good. All right. Um... Good. Oh, to whom does God give eternal life? All believers in Christ. Me and all believers in Christ. Good. All right, prayer. Why should we pray? Why should we pray? We're told to. Okay, God tells us to pray. That's the law answer, which is true. All right, Zoe. To keep a strong relationship. To keep a strong relationship with God. Are you going to add anything else to the term? Yeah, so that we can talk to it. And there's also a promise, right? There's a promise that Jesus uh, promises that God, God the Father hears us, right? He hears our prayers and will help us in our time of need to keep that relationship strong. All right. Um, let's see here. Oh, when we pray to our Father... Should we ask God in a timid and fearful manner, or should we ask God with all boldness and confidence? Boldness and confidence. All right. How do we keep God's name holy? Hallowed be thy name. Yeah. All right. How are we going to keep God's name holy among us? How are we going to keep God's name holy? How are we going to keep God's name holy? Yeah, right? Yes, when the word of God is taught and it's truth and purity, and then we, as the children of God, also lead holy lives according to it. Help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. Good. All right. Um, what are we asking God for when we pray, Thy kingdom come? Like we pray, Thy kingdom come. What are we asking God for? God's kingdom to come. Put it in your own words, Josh. Eternal life. To what? Eternal life. Okay, eternal life. Good. Good. What else? What else? There's a couple of answers I think we can have here. Yeah. God's will to be done regardless of what we do. Okay, good. Regardless of what we do, God's will is done. Uh, yeah. Well, it's coming either way, but we're asking for it to come to us so we can be a part of it. Yeah, we want to be a part of God's kingdom, right? Then, so when you're asking that you are part of God's kingdom, or that anyone else is a part of God's kingdom, right? That's what we're praying for. We're asking that people believe in Jesus and have eternal life. And that, yes, his will is done, which actually gets to the next question, right? How is God's will done? What is God's will? Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Breaking and hindering the evil plans and will of the devil, world, and our sinful nature. And keeping us firm in his word and faith until we die. All right. Uh, what is daily bread? What is daily bread? Food. Just food? And word. What do you think, Nathaniel? Anything that our body needs, right? Anything that our body needs. Um, if God gives us daily bread even without our prayers, why do we pray, give us this day our daily bread? Uh, Victoria has got her hand up. To thank him, right? So that we realize that God gives us everything and so that we receive our daily bread with 
Thanksgiving. Good. All right. When we pray, forgive us our trespasses. In your own words, what are we asking God to do? Yeah. Forgive our sins. Anything else? It's a good answer. Anything else? What else are we asking? When we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who gladly do good. Or, sorry, as we forgive those who sin against us. I kind of gave you the answer. Yeah. Gladly do good to those who sin against us. Good. Um, okay, who or what tempts us? When we pray, lead us not into temptation. Who or what tempts us? Yes. The devil. Uh, this, uh, our sinful nature and the world. Right? Uh, what do they uh, tempt us into? Like, what what, are, what is the devil, the world, the sinful nature trying to tempt us into? Yes, right? To go away from God, right? To keep away from God. Yeah. Into false beliefs, despair, another great shame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, false, uh, false beliefs, despair, other great shame, advice. Good. All right, uh, when we pray, deliver us from evil, where are we asking God to take us when our last hour comes? What is it? Heaven. Heaven, right? What does amen mean? Amen, amen. What do you think? Yes, 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 let it be so, let it be true. Good. All right, um, going to talk a little bit about the sacraments. Um, what... Is, or sorry, what is the visible element in baptism? Right? Yeah. Water, right? So you got water, and that visible <coughs> element of water is combined with the promise of Christ, right? Who started or instituted holy baptism? Uh, Christian baptism. Jesus. And what words from Scripture did he use to institute this special gift? Give you a hint. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew. There you go. Excellent. Who is to be baptized? All people. Right? Or in the words of Jesus, all nations. Right? Um, what benefits does baptism give? Can you name a benefit that get baptism gives? Right? It works for him. Amen. There you go. You got them all. All right. So, how can water do such great things, right? Uh, what makes baptism so powerful? Yeah, Lee? Yeah, it's not just the water, it's the Holy Spirit. It's also. The Word of God, right? The Word of God in and with, right? Along with faith, which trust in this Word. All right. Um, oh, who or what is drowned and put to death in your baptism? Who or what is drowned and put to death in your baptism? Yeah. Yeah. My sins, right? My old sinful nature, right? The old Adam in us. So... When our old Adam or our sinful nature is drowned, what arises to new life every day? A new Adam, right? New creature, right? In the image of Jesus. All right. Um, confession has two parts. What is the first part? Confessing. Good. And what's the second part? Absolution, which is forgiveness, right? Good. Uh, what sins should we confess before God? What sins should we confess before God? All right, we'll get... What, I just heard the answer. All of them, right? Including the ones we are not even aware of. Right? All right, so what sins should we confess before our pastor? Everything? No, not everything. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what should we confess the past? The ones that you remember, and especially... Yeah. 
the ones that know and feel in your heart, especially if it really bothers or hurts your heart, then those are the sins you should definitely confess to your pastor. All right. Um, oh, when a pastor declares God's forgiveness to you, does God actually forgive you? Yes. Yes. Good. All right. And who instituted the sacrament of the altar? Or communion. Jesus. Good. Uh, what are the visible elements in the Lord's Supper? So what are the things that we see, taste, touch, feel? Hmm? Bread and wine. Good. Um, how often should we receive the Lord's Supper? How often? Yeah. Once a week. All right. That's a good practical answer. Broadly speaking. Often, right? Often, right? Uh, my rule of thumb is if you don't remember the last time you took communion, it's been too long. Okay? It's been too long. Uh, yeah. As often, often. Right? I think that's a good word. Often. Um, why are we to receive the sacrament often? Why should we go to communion often? Yeah. Right, Jesus promises the forgiveness of sins, and we have it. Good, good. Any other reasons? Uh, that's probably the number one answer. I don't know if I can top it. Yeah. Every day we sin. Every day we sin. Jesus promises forgiveness. Right. Yeah. Good. Um, let's see here. What's the benefit of eating and drinking this bread and wine in the body and blood of Christ? Well, what's that benefit? Forgiveness of sins, right? Um, which actually gets to my next question. I kind of gave it away. What are we eating and drinking in communion? Body and blood. The body and blood of, of our Lord Jesus Christ and bread and wine. It's all four, right? It's all four, right? Um, how do we receive the sacrament worthy? How do we receive the sacrament worthily? Close. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, believing that um, we need it. Okay. Um, believing that it is the true body of Good. Of who? Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget the part of Jesus, right? It's not just true body, it's not just true blood, but true body and blood of Jesus. Good. And you're right. You've got the two first diagnostic questions we should always ask ourselves, right? Am I a sinner or do I need forgiveness? Then, is this Jesus' true body and true blood? And then finally, we can also ask ourselves a third question, uh, and that is, do I believe that this, do I intend to live as a forgiven sinner, right? Do I intend that this supper will help me to live a God-pleasing life and love and serve my neighbor better, right? And if we answer yes to those questions, we are worthy and, and uh, ready to receive it. Uh, All right. Um, good. And then finally, when you are confirmed, does this mark the end of all Christian learning that you must have to be faithful to God and strong in your faith? No. no. Good answer. You passed. Congratulations. Hey, let's give a round of applause. All right. It has been a joy uh, to teach uh, you over the last uh, two years and beyond. Uh, and so... Uh, just a quick review, uh, Bethlehem does uh, say that there's no particular age level that you have to start at for start by, uh, but a good guide rule is, you know, by sixth grade that, or seventh grade, that's a good time to make sure you start by then. Uh, if you feel that, you know, your uh, child or grandchild is ready, maybe a little earlier than that, please speak with me uh, and make arrangements. I'll start another round of catechism. Uh, at uh, probably the beginning of September. So as long as I know by August, if you intend to have your child or grandchild in catechism instruction, uh, please let me know, and uh, we'll do that. At that time, it's a two-year process. We do uh, the Lord's, or the Ten Commandments, and the Creed in one year, and then we'll do the next year uh, the uh, uh, prayer and the sacraments the following year. We kind of just rotate through. 
And then the school, I also teach at the school, and we're blending with the school. They start catechism in the sixth grade. And uh, again, I do a rotation of uh, breaking the catechism in half. And I usually try to swap out those two so that we're not on the same thing at all times. All right. Tell you what, let's uh, pray the Lord's Prayer together. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, before we have cake, I think uh, three of you can head back and take the picture. So just hang tight for just a minute. You can send it if you'd like, or just stop uh, and go around. Uh, they'll take a picture by the cake, and then once they're all set, help yourself. <laughs>